seminar this week. Before we get started, let me say how good you guys look in your suits. You will have your suits you walking around at career fair. I want to also announce that next week um, we've got some visitors coming on campus for science seminars and it should be a really big deal. We have the solid rock lecture people coming on campus to talk about the age of the earth. And that's always an interesting topic for students who are interested. How old is Europe? Is it 7,000 years old? Or some billion years old? So that will be the topic next week. We'll actually have two events next week. One will be on Wednesday evening at 7 in the Education Building, because we're expecting not just the turnout crowds, but also area churches to come out for that. And we'll have the regular science seminar that will be talking about the Grand Canyon on Thursday morning at a regular time at 11 a.m. So those are you know, big events for us next week. So if you want to invite you know, your church members from around town to the uh, Wednesday evening event, let them know. We'll be at the Education Building, great big auditorium, open up the wall, and um, hopefully they won't fall down. Right? But today, we have with us our own people, wheels. And for those who haven't heard about wheels before, this is a real treat for you. These are all do-gooders that um, are a good example to all of us. Yes, and they do wonderful things. And um, I hope that you will appreciate all the stuff that they're doing. And hopefully they will be able to join us for lunch afterwards. Yes, you're going to be able to join us for lunch? Yes, Cuts visiting us from, where are you now? Yes, you're, you're walkabout or something? Okay, she's an Austin former graduate from what year? Uh, 2016. 2016, so not that long ago. Wow. Okay, former SI for general chemistry. Way, that's high marks there. Yes, so come on out. Um, you want to know how to be successful in general chemistry? I'm going to talk to Emily Cut afterwards at lunch. We'll be in the Georgia room of the Corner Cafe, so come and join us for lunch over there. So, without any further introductions, I'll let the Wheels people take over. Give them a warm welcome. Thank you all for coming. My name is Kara Huff, and I'm the lead for this year's wheels team. Um, I chose to do wheels, even though I'm an international business major, so kind of the odd one out. But I've really enjoyed working with the wheels team, going to Kenya, and I think it can make a real difference in a lot of people's lives. So. This is Emily. Hi guys, I'm Emily Tite. Um, I just graduated this last May, um, and I've been involved with the Wheels Project uh, since my freshman year, and I'm still involved in some writing. Um, and I've gotten to travel to Kenya twice. Uh, it's a really cool project, and you learn a lot. So if you're at all interested, listen. If you have friends that might be interested, listen for them. It's just cool stuff. And I'm John DeFrancesco. I'm a junior biology major. Uh, this is my third semester with Wheels. I went to Africa <coughs> past summer. Um, with the Wheels Project as well. I'm Karen Rispin. I teach biology here. I grew up in Kenya. Um, it's really fun to work with Latino students to make a difference. We're going to hear from Emily, who's an alumni first. Yay. Okay, okay so... Um, get the magic hat up there. Okay, well, so I'm going to talk about um, the last... I guess most recent research that I've been involved with with Wheels, we do a series of projects, um, and most recently, um, I guess all of Wheels is trying to address um, a problem. And the problem is that um, wheelchairs are really valuable uh, resources for people that need them, and a lot of people don't have them, especially in low resource settings. Um, donated wheelchairs are often people's first response to meeting this problem, uh, but as you can see, this photo on the left here, that's a giant cage full of donated wheelchairs that weren't appropriate to the environment, and they broke really quickly and they ended up in this shed. Um, so research is needed to standardize uh, the way wheelchairs are delivered um, and to give uh, the organizations that donate them and build appropriate wheelchairs encouragement that they're doing the right thing, investing money the ways they're investing. Um, and research can also help encourage donors um, to invest in the right ways and manufacturers to be encouraged to, to fix their chairs. So as wheels, we try to provide some of that research. Um, one of the ways um, 
I guess the areas of research that's needed is what's called patient reported outcome measures or PROMs. So not fancy, dressy PROMs. Uh, these are paper questionnaire PROMs. Um, so these are is objective data. We ask people about their wheelchairs and that helps um, fix all the problems that I mentioned first. Just uh, standardize the, the way they're uh, delivered and um, the, the design of wheelchairs for low resource settings. So most PROMs fail to consider user satisfaction. So just that simple question, do you like your wheelchair? It's a very simple question that is often overlooked. Um, people will ask um, about maybe more specific things or more like general things about the wheelchair if it breaks, um, and they don't ask that simple question. And we think it's a very valuable data source. These are some, that's a, Quest is a, another uh, PROM that is very general in what it asks about. So like we... Um, our kind of the basis of our study that we did recently is we think user perception of the wheelchair is essential to their production, their improvement, um, to making them, to fixing the problems that we see in them. So our prom was called the Wheelchair Components Questionnaire for Users. So we ask someone who has a wheelchair, the user, we ask them about the components on their wheelchair. And so we had eight questions regarding wheelchair components, uh, and you can see them there. And then we used a visual analog scale. So we, for each question, we had someone mark on the line um, how they felt about that certain component and compared to kind of letter grades, um, their students. So that would be pretty, that's pretty, um, you know, relatable to most people. Um, and then they had a comment at the bottom. They could say what about their wheelchair made them feel the way that they marked. So we measured that line and we turn it into a number, and this is the numbers that we collect and we use for statistical data. So that's how we have, we have some um, concrete data and then we have some more objective explanatory comments. Both are really valuable. So um, our hypothesis, we wanted to validate this questionnaire in some ways. So at first we wanted to validate it for test-retest reliability. So if someone does a questionnaire once <clears throat> and then they do it again, <coughs> It should be reliable. That person, if they have the same chair, should have the same score. So that shows that the, the questionnaire is reliable. Um, so from those little vast numbers that we measured, we test them just to see if the data is normal, and we can use it for statistics. That's what Anderson Darling does. And then our retest measure was interclass correlation coefficient. And we want that to be as close as to 1 as we can be. And 0.7, uh, above 0.7 is generally acceptable. So that's what we were hoping for our questionnaire. We also hypothesized we would get construct validity. So our questionnaire, when it's measured against another questionnaire, uh, would be valid and relatable. And so we did a regression analysis, and we compared WCQU scores to the Quest, which is another problem that I mentioned. So that's construct validity. Then last, we have discriminatory validity. So that's something about our questionnaire, um, and we wanted to see that the questionnaire could collect data and help us discriminate between types of wheelchairs we would see in the study and components on a wheelchair. Um, and that's really va valuable so manufacturers can evaluate how is my wheelchair doing against others, uh, what part of my wheelchair is maybe breaking or isn't liked as well as others. So that's what we hypothesized. Our methods, uh, we got all our study, our ethics approval uh, from the organizations we worked with. We did this study in Kenya at a, a partner organization. It's a school for kids uh, with physical disabilities, wheelchair users at that school, as we'll get to. But So we got all our studies approved, which is an important thing. You want to make sure everyone's on the same page. And then, as I mentioned, our participants were wheelchair users in this boarding school um, in Kenya, which is considered a low-resource area, which is where we're trying to target these chairs. So we had the school make the announcements to gather students uh, that were, about, um, uh, I guess, we were able to do the study. They met all the requirements. Students were invited to take our questionnaire, and they were asked to complete the questionnaire on their own, and we circled around, helped them do it, and we collect all the completed forms. So here's some of the results, our demographics, uh, big table, uh, but you can see that's the spread of male and female, and we split up the types of wheelchairs we saw, and then the types of uh, diagnosis that a lot of our um, participants had. And the first column and second column uh, we had to split up some of the statistics. There were some people that didn't complete parts of the questionnaire, so we could only use um, some of their forms for, we had to, yeah, we had to have complete sets of both takes for ICC, um, and then we had to remove some uh, cases for the ICC. So that's what those two columns are for. And so here's some of our results. So VAS score, that's the number from the little scale we measured. 
For Anderson Darling, our data was normal. Yay, that means we can use it for statistics. For ICC, making sure it's reliable, we got 0.85, and uh, sorry, yeah, 0.85, and we wanted above 0.7. So we were pretty happy with that. And for our regression analysis, that um, construct validity, comparing it to the quest, we got significant correlations with the quest, so it's, it's you know, comparable to another validated questionnaire out there. That's really, we were happy about that. And then ANOVA, uh, we had significant difference between um, what we called the folding transport chair, which is just a basic hospital chair, and all the other wheelchairs that were present at the site. So all those other chairs were ones that were at some level designed for the setting they were in. And you can see that there was a significant difference between that basic hospital chair and ones that were designed for the setting. And we didn't have enough data to differentiate between the types of designed wheelchairs, but uh, we could see, this was encouraging because we could tell manufacturers, hey, your, your chair is at some degree better than this basic hospital chair, which is what a lot of the students end up with as their long-term chair. This is a fancy graph, and it shows um, that there is no interaction between the, the, the folding wheelchair hospital chairs, FTC, that lower line, and the other lots. And you can see they were rated higher. Um, and you can see the certain components that uh, were rated higher or lower. Um, and you can see, you know, like this makes sense. This point is really low because the seat on a hospital chair is just a sling. There's not really a cushion. It's nothing really supportive. So you can see a lot of people didn't like it. So our conclusions. We got our test, retest reliability. That's really nice. <laughs> We had acceptable construct validity when we compared to the Quest, another PROM that's validated. And we were able to discriminate between wheelchair types, but with the data that we had, um, we could only discriminate between our folding chair and you know, the big group of designed wheelchairs. So like I was saying, this is um, encouraging to manufacturers that their designs are, are making a difference um, in, in people's opinions, not just clinicians that know what to look for. These are just people that use the chair, and they're saying that they like it better. So. That's, that's nice to see that it's recognized. And our conclusion for this, um, what we hope, the point of all this, what we hope to use the WCQU for, we believe the WCQU enables wheelchair users to give feedback on their components, um, user feedback, which is really valuable. Uh, we're going to publish this study. Uh, we're working on that actually today. Me and Mr. Spinner are going to hammer out the details, and hopefully we'll get this published, and then the WCQU will be out there in the research world, and people that are doing this kind of research um, to better chairs can use this questionnaire and they can see that we've done research and we validated it with some statistics. And in a clinical setting, um, the rating and the comment is really, really valuable uh, for, for clinicians that are monitoring their own patients. Um, and it can help address, like we said, certain issues that may be overlooked, certain things that might be breaking. Um, and at the same time, um, manufacturers and people that design wheelchairs can see that data and see where are the problems, what type of chairs are doing are well liked and are doing well. Um, so that's our hope. We did have some limitations. There is a small language barrier in Kenya. Uh, the the national kind of business and schooling language is English, but English is often not spoken in casual conversation. Um, and the language that is spoken is is very unique. It's not very, I guess, easily translated because it's this thing called a, a patios, which is a type of language. Um, it's, Shang is the name of this patio, so it's a, it's a mix of a lot of different dialects. Um, Swahili and some kind of um, different dialects around Kenya from different tribes. Um, and so the, the way that people speak is a, is a mix of that depending on where they're from. Really neat. Uh, but because of that, translation is best conveyed in person. It's really hard to standardize that and make a questionnaire that you know, doesn't sound like a Google translated form that doesn't make sense. So we had translators or assistants with us that would help um, just kind of clarify things as needed. Uh, but that's something we could address for future studies. Also, our low number of responses, we could look at improving that in the future. Um, and that would make our results more statistically powerful, especially for the ANOVA, because we weren't able to distinguish between all the types of wheelchairs. Um, so that's the discriminatory validity. Um, so those are some of, some of our limitations. And I just wanted to add this a little bit. Um, Nicole Lehman, I worked with her in my first year, and she, she went here. Um, she was a really cool girl. Um, and she, uh, she passed recently, but she was just super happy, and she's part of all this research. So I just wanted to give a little memory to her, and she made lots of people smile like these kids. So, okay, that was my research. Thank you.
Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the study that we did this past summer. Um, this is the study that I was responsible for. So this is um, the other two facets of the WCQC. Um, the WCQC, or, I'm sorry, the, the Wheelchair Components Questionnaire. So there's three um, facets of that. And Emily just talked about the Wheelchair Components Questionnaire for users. I'm going to talk about the Wheelchair Components Questionnaire for condition. And then also the Wheelchair Components Questionnaire for appropriateness. And these two questionnaires are questionnaires that are filled out by um, clinicians or by uh, professionals in the field. So these aren't filled out by the wheelchair users themselves. Um, but first, um, this, the goal of this study was to um, validate these two questionnaires so that then the clinicians that, um, that use those, um, that evaluate wheelchairs, um, will be able to use these questionnaires in their um, in their evaluation. This is something that we're trying to validate so they're able to use that. Um, the wheelchair components questionnaire for condition um, looks at the condition of the wheelchair components. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, the, the questionnaire is in the similar format um, as the WCQU that Emily just talked about. There's eight questions and all of those questions are um, given uh, a vast score, so that visual analog scale that she talked about, the raters will go through each component of the wheelchair and they'll mark um, how they feel the condition of the wheelchair is and they'll also uh, write a supplementary comment at the bottom. Um, and this is looking at condition regardless of design, regardless of the design of the wheelchair. Um, so just looking at how well the, the parts are holding up over time. Um, and then the wheelchair components questionnaire for appropriateness, the WCQA, looks at the um, interaction between the wheelchair user and the wheelchair that they are in. Um, so it's looking at how well the wheelchair fits um, the user, how well it works for them, how well the wheelchair user is able to function in that wheelchair. Um, and so both of these um, were evaluated by um, two clinicians, and this was the study that we did this, this summer in Africa. So. Um, we had 46 uh, wheelchair users. We had a list of wheelchair users that was given to us by the school. And so we would bring them in, um, trying to, to make it so that we wouldn't interrupt their class schedule a whole lot. Um, so we would bring uh, two wheelchair users in at once, and we would have um, the, the raters, the clinicians, rate both of the chairs. Um, and so uh, they would rate a chair for... Um, appropriateness and condition, and they would do that for both chairs, and then we would compare their scores to see how similar um, the raters rated the chairs. Um, and so we would do, um, similar to what Emily talked about, um, doing the interclass correlation coefficient, the ICC, um, that looks at how, um, how similar and how, um, yeah, how similar the, uh, the ratings were between the two raters. So, um, if a rater rated a chair very low, then we would expect that the other rater would also rate the chair very low. Um, and so when we went to Africa, we went with two um, trained physical therapists who are both um, practicing here um, in North America, and they both had um, a significant uh, amount of time working with wheelchairs. So they were, uh, they were trained professionals. They weren't um, people that had no experience with wheelchairs. So that's, um, that's what we looked at. And then with the ICC, um, results for the um, for the WCQC, the wheelchair components questionnaire for condition, um, the ICC score was above 0.7, so we were able to validate that questionnaire. Um, and then for the WCQA, um, it was not above 0.7. So we'll go back and we'll retweak that questionnaire, and then we'll um, we'll look at validating that at another point. Um, but the the goal, I guess one of the, uh, the results of the study, especially, especially for the WCQC, um, is now that we are, uh, we're writing a paper and we, um, we got accepted to the uh, International Seating Symposium for next year, so we'll be presenting um, some of our research that we've done there as well. Um, and then just to talk a little bit about um, Africa, um, some of the opportunities that I was able to have um, going over there. Uh, so we spent three weeks at the school doing research, and then the fourth week, the last week that um, we were there, myself and another student um, went to Kajabi, which is about an hour and a half away from the school, um, and we spent a week at a hospital there. Um, I was personally following an orthopedic surgery team around, so starting on Monday and going till Friday, um, I spent five days um, 
following a, a surgery team around, I spent three days in the operating room with them as they were doing um, various procedures, a lot of um, fracture reductions, a lot of a couple of hip replacements. Um, so very hands-on, like very able to kind of see what was going on, ask a lot of questions. Um, and then I spent two days in a clinic where they did a lot of pre-op and post-op visits with uh, patients of theirs. So able to experience that a little bit, get hands-on. Um, I was able to kind of help them hold hold things and uh, remove staples and sutures and things like that. So uh, it was just a great opportunity. Uh, we spent eight days in total there at Kijabi, and we were on the compound at the hospital, so we were able to interact with missionaries and interact with um, doctors that would come in just kind of periodically. Um, we had lunch every day with uh, the surgeons and those that we were working with, so that was just a great opportunity to interact and kind of get a, a better idea of what um, missions, and particularly medical missions, looks like in another country. Uh, so now Kara's going to talk a little bit about her stuff. Like John, I went with the team in the past summer, and one of the other studies that we did was the aspects of wheelchair mobility protocol. And that is basically to look at different surfaces and wheelchairs and say, how good is this wheelchair at going on this surface? So we did rough, tight, smooth, and curved surfaces. And we wanted to see how is the wheelchair performing on this in comparison to other wheelchairs and... So, yeah, those were the four surfaces and the <coughs> pictures of each one. And the tests were for four minutes, so we would start a timer and they would continuously go over the environment for four minutes. And then they would fill out, as before, the VAST score and write a comment about how their wheelchair struggled to get over something or it was really easy. And we would calculate the distance traveled from when they started to when they stopped. And so, yeah, similar to the other studies, we were trying to validate the questionnaire and say that this can be used mul multiple times for, so each user was doing the test twice in their own wheelchair, and we would compare the two scores to see if they were similar or the same. And so we used the ICC to get inner user reliability, and we were able to validate that. And so the ICC was above 0.7. And now we can produce a paper similar that will allow other people to use this questionnaire when doing wheelchair research. And also I wanted to talk a little bit about our typical day in Kenya, just so it's not so abstract. I mean, we're doing all this research, but what did our day actually look like? So we would get there in the morning to the school, and we would all have devos together with the staff from the school. So they have chaplains, they have teachers, they have physical therapists that work there. And we would all do, do a devotional together and sing together for a little while and read some passages from the Bible and then pray together before we started our day. And after that, we would go out and start our testing. So we'd go find the students from their classroom. We had a list of all the students that were available for the study. And we'd go to their classroom and bring them to the study site and talk with them about what their favorite school subject was and just really try to get to know them because they're assisting us in this study and we wanted to respect that. And so after a period of testing, we would take a break and go back and meet all of the staff again and have tea together. If you don't know, um, chai is tea, and it's really popular in Kenya, and it's just a thing that they do. You take a break, you socialize, you really just get to know each other. And so after we had tea, which was usually with a little snack, we would go back to testing and get some more students out of the classroom and have them complete our t test. And after that, we would go eat lunch together, and then we'd go back and do some more testing. And then after that, we'd return to the place we were staying, which is called SACDEP, and we'd usually upload our data from the papers into the computer for that day so that we could stay on top of all of the data. Another of the things we do is we're not just there to do research. We're there to experience the culture and really to get a feel for Kenya. So we go on a safari trip, 
and go out and drive through and see all the animals, and it's super fun. And we stay in a tented camp. Now, when you think of tents, you think of camping, you think of, like, miserable, cold bugs, but this is, like, a five-star tent. It's very different than what you're expecting, and it was really cool to stay there and just experience the culture. <coughs> One of the other things that we did, which was the first time a wheels team did this, we actually went out into the city where the school was with our helpers, who were basically our little translators for the week. So they took us out and let us explore the city and showed us their favorite things, and it was really cool to get to know them better. And we visited a park and saw a waterfall, and it was just a really cool experience. So now Sister Swin's going to share a little bit more with you guys. One of the things that really motivates me with the Wheels Project is working with awesome Laterno students. And they go on to do all kinds of neat things. This opens doors. Um, I was just talking to Matt Sturm. He texted me this morning. He's off to a medical school interview. He said, pray for me. And he has interviewed a couple times, and Wheels does come up. They're able to talk about things that um, are of interest. Um, if you want to get into grad school with anything health-related, you need to show that you have a heart for caring for people. International travel is great. Undergrad research is great. And Wheels helps with quite a few things like that. Uh, for Kara, she's heading to the diplomatic service probably, so there is a lot of carryover. Can you interact in sometimes challenging tasks in a low resource area? Um, things don't always happen in a cookie cutter way, and uh, that's a challenge. It draws us to prayer. This thing is just soaked in prayer. One of the things it allows us to do when we have wheelchairs in a study, we go to the wheelchair manufacturers and say, would you like your wheelchair in a field study? These are great people that are doing this as not-for-profit. They usually say, pick me. And I say, OK, get 25 of a certain type of wheelchair that Bethany kids at Joytown by October. And they go for it. Uh, actually, right now, the CEO of Hope Haven is unloading a wheelchair container there. Um, I asked them to be present when the wheelchairs are unloaded so they're happy with how they're provided. And they can't say, well, our wheelchairs all broke because you didn't give them out right. They weren't provided correctly. Um, and of course, that enormously benefits the people, the kids at Joytown and the people at uh, the boarding school because they need wheelchairs. So it's a kind of win-win situation. Um, I always bring, uh, as, as John mentioned, professionals with us. Um, and one of the things we do is after we evaluate wheelchairs, they, they uh, repair and adjust them. So there's sort of this binge of fixing wheelchairs and fitting, fitting them to people while we're there. Um, as you can see, it can get pretty busy. And you can see what difference it'll make to this kid who's waiting in line with something broken on his wheelchair. You know, you can't get around with a broken chair. And then, uh, as John was explaining, the professionals take data so we can give feedback to the companies of what is not durable on your wheelchair. Because that's why we need 25 of each kind, so you have some statistical power. It wasn't just one weird wheelchair that the footplate fell off. It, is on 16 wheelchairs that the footplate fell off, which is actually what happened to that wheelchair he's looking at right now. That's the free wheelchair machine chair, uh, generation two chair, and uh, already Don Schoendorfer, the CEO, has modified their footplate attachments, which is really exciting, because now all the people who get those chairs around the world will have footplates that don't fall off quite as quickly, hopefully. Um, as uh, Emily was explaining, we get feedback from the wheelchair users. One thing that uh, often people with disabilities are not looked at, they're looked past or over, and people do things sort of to them or for them, but not with them. And the <coughs> phrase is, nothing about me without me. In other words, listen to me. And it's so important to say, what don't you like or what do you like about your wheelchair? It might be that you have a little girl who's totally embarrassed because her wheelchair is an ugly boy color. And you can deal with that. Um, you can look for spray paint or something. You know what I mean? There, if you listen to them, there are ways to solve the issue. And performance tests, this is what uh, Kara was talking about. We want to we know how well the wheelchairs work. If we just measured individual people like we did this last summer, comparing them to themselves, you say, did they do it the same way twice? 
people are very different. If I had a pair of runners and I said, which runners are best? I had three types of runners, and I compared you with the three types of runners and your grandmother. All you'd find out is you and your grandmother can run at different speeds. But if you do it for like 40 people and all of them hate uh, runners number two because of some fe feature, you found out something that's of use. And that's called a, re a repeated measures format. And that's what this aspect of wheelchair mobility is intended to be. But in order to use it that way, it has to be an accurate assessment of mobility. And so that's why we did the input rate or reliability study, because if it's accurate, it should measure the same people about the same amount twice. If they do it in one chair, their own chair, then a day later they do it again, it should come out about the same. And that's what we were checking for. And it's great for students to be able to present data. That's something that looks really good. Um, it also builds confidence. The first time you stand in front of a bunch of professionals to present your data, it can be a little scary. Um, this is Sonia. Um, she, did, she and Emily were at uh, Resna, right? Yeah, in Washington, um, presenting their research. This is one of the chairs that is planned for this next year's study. It's called the Rock the World Chair, <laughs> newly designed foldable wheelchair. They don't know how well it works in the field yet. And if they do, they're talking about it. The guy who designed this is an engineer in Germany. Um, working with an organization called Rock Wheelchairs, an international organization. Uh, if he gets the 25 chairs to me, I'll be able to say what works and what doesn't for, we'll be able to, with Laterno students who come along, find out how, how, what, the, how, what kind of mobility does it provide? What do the people think about it? Has it broken? Those are some of the questions. Here's another one. These are the bumblebee chairs. They call them the bee chairs because they were yellow. Hope Haven had another chair we did some studies on that had difficulty with mobility. Uh, it provided pretty good support, but it was real heavy on the front and really hard to get over bumps with. So he actually responded to our studies by revisiting the design and coming up with this three-wheeled chair, three-wheeled wheelchair. And we think it'll provide better mobility. We're a little worried because it's the seat is on one bar in the middle, which is nice and adjustable and very simple, but if the interface between the wood of the seat and the metal of the bar of the middle breaks, that might be a problem, and we don't know how stable that, how thorough that is. Uh, the students that are going to be with wheels next semester are going to do a pushing study here uh, to learn how to do the data collection before we travel. Um, the students who travel with wheels help to raise the funds for their own travel. It's quite a commitment. It's based in prayer. Um, and I think most everybody who's gone has had an amazing adventure. It's, it really is um, an amazing adventure. Questions for any of us? Do you still have a partnership with Johnny and Friends? Um, we're still very much in contact with them. Um, they are no longer manufacturing chairs, so our studies inform the choices of chairs they would purchase to distribute. Um, there's a Bible study they have called Beyond Suffering that I'm, we're doing a, a life group with that, but it would be, it is, it's something that now is being, I was able to introduce our partner organizations in Kenya to it. Um, so there's still a lot of interaction with Johnny and friends. And if you don't know who Johnny Erickson Tata is, Google her. She's amazing. With the research that you've done, have you been able to make recommendations to the wheelchair companies that they have made some significant changes or planning that in the future? These chairs were developed in response to a ch uh, studies with the Hope Haven chair saying that it didn't provide good mobility. And that chair, we were able to give feedback on a problem with the push rims of the wheels. They were catching people's hands, and a problem with the foot plates, and a problem with the cushions, and uh, they're responding already. So when is Laterno going to produce its own wheelchair? That you would have to ask Norm Reese. We're about the people end of it. <laughs> It was really neat to see. I, I was able to go two, two years, and the first year, uh, I think we after we'd started to see some of these chairs, and so I'd, I'd seen them kind of go to studies, and we discovered a lot of problems with the foot plates and the, the wheels, and then the second summer I was there, I actually helped put together, I think, like <coughs> 25 or 30 of these chairs, 
uh, that were the redesigned ones. So it was really cool to see, like, in the spans that I was involved in wheels, a company listening to the data we collected and then changing it and then sending the chairs to be reevaluated. So they really do listen. Um, another cool way, I guess, like, Research and wheels in that it gets involved is when Sonia and I were in Washington, D.C. for a conference. Uh, there was a day that this, this wheelchair conference, uh, they set up um, appointments to meet with our senators um, and uh, representatives. And we went to Capitol Hill and we met with uh, the East Texas representative and we told them, we like, just talked to him about different legislation uh, that would be, uh, it was focused on, of course, U.S. Um, legislation. Uh, but issues that were uh, would affect uh, how people could get wheelchairs. Um, so it was really cool to be involved in that process, and uh, you know, just we met with a representative's aide and kind of put our little bid in of you know, please look at this issue. Uh, but that's another way that um, researchers are involved, um, kind of in the lobbying aspect of it. But in like you know, they're they're coming from at a place of the researchers involved. They care. They know the issues, and um, they can take their data and put it in the research world and make it work. And they can also kind of use it for the political world and, and help it to change things for real people. I've got another question, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, if uh, one of the students here is interested in working with WHEELS, uh, maybe it would be good for you to describe how does a student get connected with WHEELS and do you just go out and find bright, capable, and <laughs> servant oriented students like these or is a student able to uh, partner with you, get connected with wheels? Uh, is there a process? <laughs> yeah, well, the way that we go into wheels is there's an interview, first of all, and we just express our interest to Mrs. Rispin, and then she kind of coordinates the team and really just showing interest. Yeah, that's, that's how it, <laughs> the first step for sure is talking to Mr. Spin. Yeah. Um, applica there's application, pretty easy. Uh, but the, the cool thing, is it's very flexible. You know, I biology cares international studies, doing diplomat stuff. So it's very flexible with whatever. You're, you don't have to be this cookie cutter type of student to be involved in it. If you're interested and you want to help um, and you want to be have like experiences and connections you never would dream. I never thought I would be on Capitol Hill talking to <laughs> senators. So. It doesn't look like it's very flexible, um, so it just takes that, that first step, no matter what, how you might think you could be involved. Um, yeah, there's even, um, I think we're looking at future studies of uh, doing some programming stuff and getting our yeah, questionnaires. There's, computer science, uh, there's actually, yeah, yeah, there's a group of computer science students working with us. It takes a commitment. It's not something to do just to get it on your resume, but it's very open and very flexible. This next semester, rather than a three-credit hour course, it's going to be one-credit hour course. Um, to prepare, prepare for travel, but before you go, you do need to know how to do the data collection because if you just started doing it in Kenya, that would not work very well in a less predictable environment. <laughs> um, uh, you do need to raise funds to travel, so if you are interested in traveling this next summer, you need to contact me as soon as possible. Just email me. It's Karen Rispin at lechi.edu. Um, I need to see, uh, in the past it's always been you need to have a 3.0 average just so that it doesn't um, steal from your other courses that you should be doing well in. And uh, contact me, it's an application, and then contact somebody on the team, they can be a past member or current member, so they can say yes, I can work with this person because it's a collaboration, it's not so much a top-down course. <clears throat> Do you have anything you'd say to people who want to do wheels, John? Um, yeah, I mean, when I uh, when I first started with wheels, uh, Matt Sturm was a big um, proponent of that for me, kind of directing me in that. He was my PA when I got here. Uh, and so I just talked to Mrs. Rispin about it and uh, got a lot of information. Um, I didn't do it the first semester um, of my... Uh, I didn't do it my fall semester of my, or my spring semester of my freshman year. I started um, fall semester, sophomore year. Um, so there's definitely a lot of flexibility in like when you start with the, with the process too. I know with the, the one credit hour class it changes things a little bit. It's a little bit easier to fit into um, your schedules as well. But I would, yeah, it's, it's a great opportunity. I really encourage you guys if you're interested, talk to us, talk to Mrs. Erspin about it. Kara did it as a senior. Yep. I've had quite a few seniors that actually travel um, right after grad. Um, 
in um, all different ways. Um, kinesiology <coughs> makes it part of their degree plan. It fits into biology as a uh, biology credit. Kines, you do it as a, internship. an internship. So the summer travel works as an internship. The summer travel, if you want, is a three-credit hour course. It's a GSL course that, as I understand it, you don't pay tuition, but you have course fees. So um, it's a three-week trip in May is what it has been. If you're doing any languages, like if you also have Spanish, I was able to combine my travel with some Spanish credits, and I got an international studies minor. Um, so it's just kind of a neat way to combine things. And for those of you who are honors students, it also works as uh, the one credit hours work as an honors course thing, too. And I've had engineering students, business students, I've had computer science students work, work with me. I've had um, kine, a lot of kinesiology students, a lot of biology students, a lot of chem bio students. So, yeah, we had an electrical engineering student this last year, and BME students. Um, that, the engineers, there's a way to do it so it works as a junior design credit in your course audit, but that is, of course, always flexible. It's quite a flexible thing to do, and we can tailor what research you do a bit to what your area of focus is. How big is the team? <laughs> the team has gone from, some years it's just been two of us, and some years it's been the most was eight, or something like that. We always travel with other people, so the team is actually bigger than the, the two students that came. Um, Last summer there were four of us. Yeah, Four were, students. Yeah. There were 11 of us that went to Africa this summer. Uh, there were three PTs, Mrs. Rispin, and then the students, and then one of the PTs brought uh, her, his wife and his son. Yeah, his so wife is in there. Yeah. So it's, it's very, it varies. And one of the things that people have been worried about is Kenya, if you look on the risk assessment, has a relatively high risk assessment. That scares some parents. Um, we do pass the safety parameters with the Laterno University and have plans. It's a lot like New York City. There are areas in New York City you don't want to walk by yourself at night. And there are areas in Longview you don't want to walk by yourself at night. But if you're with somebody who knows Longview, and we always book with Kenyans, we're always working with Kenyans, you make good friends. You, I, I think all of you guys are friends on Facebook with some of the Kenyans that you met over there. It's not really a them and us, but when you're working with Kenyans and the driver you're with is Kenyan, you're not very likely to get in trouble and we're not in a high-risk area, so our risk assessment has always been very acceptable. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. <laughs>